my favorite faculty at maro was uh, dr rakesh sir uh, dr rohan sir uh, dr manisha and dr sakshi from obg and uh, i think the way they taught has stayed with me very well and uh, i could Im- even imagine uh, while doing questions i could imagine the way they have taught that topic i think they drive home the, the point very well and uh, though their te- teaching patterns are uh, quite variable and in fact quite extremely different but uh, i think that is the that that disorder and order has stayed with me and i was able to do questions because of that hello everyone i am aprajita sharma and i secured a rank of 60 in this uh, july and i said 2021 and uh, i've been a primary uh, plan c user of maro since Ju- uh, january 2020 and maro has been the primary source of my uh, preparation throughout i began my preparation in april 2020 last year uh, previously i had given just one attempt at neat uh, 2020 in january secured a rank of 60000 with no preparation whatsoever so in april um, i took a subscription of plan c maro and began my preparation for the neat of 2021 and uh, throughout the study course i did attempt one ini set exam in Ju- in november 2020 which was with um, a very minimal level of preparation i secured a rank of 1600 in the november 2020 ini set and that was with a uh, very less preparation i would say uh, with hardly even completing all the subjects once so that sort of gave me a confidence that if with more targeted efforts i can probably get a much better rank in the next neat or ini set and um, one major problem with me in the previous i said uh, 2020 was that i was uh, second guessing myself in every question because the pattern had changed and uh, that took a lot of time i was i was not able to complete the paper itself so uh, that had brought down my confidence a lot and that even affected the rest of the paper that i attempted so that was one thing i realized that my shortcoming was timing and the second most important thing was uh, the fact that i was second guessing myself in every answer and uh, i was probably allotting more time than required to every question so that is one thing that i had to improve and um, so after that that was my take home point from i and i said november and i started working on my speed and also um, answering in my first attempt i was not giving trying not to give too much thought while answering the questions in the mocks that i took and in other exams so i did realize after my uh, last attempt in ins set that for people like me who do second guess themselves while answering questions it's a big drawback because that takes up a lot of time and the other questions which have to be attempted they might not you might not get enough time for that and it might affect the overall outcome so uh, the best thing that i learned for myself from this experience was to attempt the question in the first go go with my gut feeling and after applying all the logic and all the information that i know and uh, but not keep going back to the same question and thinking of changing the answer because that uh, usually worsens the outcomes so after attending the last ini set in november i had a few i realized that i had to plan my study pattern and how i'm going to divide my day and how much time i have to dedicate to solving questions as well as to reading my notes because i was not very thorough with my notes itself uh, so that is when i realized that reading notes and uh, giving your majority of the time of the day towards notes is going to make you build your concepts and uh, make you revise everything continuously keep you in touch with the subjects as well as giving a dedicated time to questions uh, every day was really important so doing around 150 uh, 100 to 150 questions in a day would be uh, more than enough at least in the beginning so after november i started uh, Uh, reviewing some of the maro revision videos and then i used to read my notes and for the same subject um sometimes uh, you know continuously studying one subject used to become very boring and uh, very redundant uh, so i would suggest even to those who are preparing for neat pg now that instead of sticking to one subject at a time maybe uh, two subjects uh, continuing uh, at the same time may be uh, more beneficial for you So after the last uh, and I said I had devised my uh, plan in such a way that it included two subjects at the same time 
and uh, i would suggest this to others who are preparing for neat pg now as well that instead of sticking to one subject at a time maybe uh, two or three subjects of your liking if combined together in a day for few hours every day will um, be more beneficial so like i when i was studying surgery surgery is a huge subject and uh, while doing it i used to get really bored and sometimes um, I, my efficiency used to come down so i combined uh, psychiatry and surgery though there is no relation between the subjects as such but i think that works to your advantage because they are completely different things and applying your brain to two different things in a day will improve the efficiency so uh, that is one strategy and then doing questions along with it so few questions from the mod- a few modules from surgery when while uh, reading surgery and few from psychiatry so i think the overall question modules um, the development uh, while you are reading the notes and putting it all together will do wonders if uh, done in a combination of two rather than sticking to one so overall um, my preparation when it began in april i thought I'd, i'll have time to make notes for uh, all the 19 subjects and that's how i began my preparation so for majority and the uh, and the main uh, the bigger subjects i made my own notes but uh, by the time it was um, september i realized that if i continue making my notes i'm not probably not going to finish on time so that is uh, that's around uh, september that i ordered maro notes thinking that uh, maybe i'll benefit more Uh, if i read the subjects from from the short subjects from the notes that are provided by maru so initially um it took me a little bit of time to get adjusted and to overcome my mental barrier that if i have not made my uh, notes in my own handwriting then it will be difficult for me to retain but uh, one thing uh, that i understood through the whole exercise what that was that this fact is not true because if you are a person who are prepare who's preparing for one year for the entrance you will definitely uh, face this time problem and in that case if you read from maro notes in my opinion it is not going to affect how much you retain and how well you retain uh, but of course this is very subjective and it uh, differs from a pers- from a person to person but for a person who is current- currently in uh, second or third prof of mbbs and using maro so i would definitely suggest of uh, them to make their own notes and uh, put everything down on paper in one place and all the information that they collect over the next two or three years even during internship and uh, then maybe in the end it will become easy because everything will be in one place but uh, like i said for somebody who's who has a time crunch and who's preparing only for few months for post graduation i think maro notes is a wonderful um, opportunity if you do get to order them and use them and do one more thing which is very important about the maro notes is the workspace and the empty spaces the active spaces that are provided in the uh, maro notes and uh, i think while using it and while watching the video simultaneously it keeps you in check and um, it keeps the person maybe in sync with where the video is going and where our mind is wandering even if we are not studying actively it forces us to write down stuff and whatever we are learning at that point so i think it keeps a it keeps you in sync with what is going on and that is one great one the greatest feature of maro notes that i'd suggest and uh, also the fact that they are very crisp and to the point when i started making my notes of uh, and watching the video simultaneously on maro that was the point where i was advised by my seniors also to begin attempting the question bank then itself and try to complete it within the stipulated time and that is uh, till the time i'll be finishing my videos and the first reading of my notes so that was my plan and i went about it in the same way so initially my uh, target used to finish at least somewhere around 8 modules per day and if possible more than that but um, usually it used to be in the range of 7 to 8 modules a day and um, one major boost that i got to this um the solving the question bank was the marathon which was conducted last year and that one month it uh, deliberately they had kept the value uh, the number of question banks to be uh, completed in a day to around 10 and uh, i think that's when i finished maximum of the modules but here there is a problem that um, the idea of solving the question bank is not to finish the module but the idea is to gain as much uh, information and as much knowledge that will complement the ones that we have already written in our notes so i think just for the fin- sake of finishing modules if um, we do that then i think we are suffering we are the ones who are suffering somewhere so it's best advised that uh, do the question modules in a way that you are able to finish a decent number maybe 8 in a day but it should be quality and um, 
the amount that you have spent on the question bank that day that time it should be justified for so i think that my advice to everybody who's preparing right now will be to use the question bank to their advantage and whenever they feel that they are lacking uh, lagging behind in their revision in terms of notes in terms of videos um i, th- I think that's where question bank comes to your rescue even while sitting waiting in an area you might not be able to watch a video but you can definitely solve a question bank and read review the questions which you get wrong the major factor about uh, question bank is that it's a very flexible thing and um, while doing anything in the world while waiting for something and uh, one can actually attempt the question bank and benefit from it any in any place so that is one thing i think uh, that should be utilized to their advantage whoever is preparing right now because the time will be short and the number of question bank the modules that you can finish will be uh, more beneficial um is one of uh, the best aspect about the question bank was that um, the bookmark system which when i initially began there was only one uh, bookmark the standard bookmark option was there but i think with the uh, later um, the editions maro had converted it into a three type of bookmark uh, feature so i think that was the most beneficial fact because while attempting there will be a lot of questions which you will categorize into uh, the questions that you don't know anything about and the questions that you know you have some idea but you keep getting it wrong and then some other questions which might be fact based which you have to keep adding to your um you know the back at the back of your mind every time so i think this division and this uh, variable uh, options that are there in question bank for the bookmarking system i think that has done wonders when i was segregating the questions out of my question bank so when i started preparing in april last year i was not sure of giving grant test and basically uh, in the beginning i didn't know the importance of a grant test so um, i think it was only in june when i started giving the grant test very diligently after listening to my friends and seniors who advised me to do that in the beginning it used to be maybe once a month and uh, i used to get very apprehensive and anxious about what rank i get and um, i think for to me initially it was more about how much what is the rank and how much i uh, how well am i performing in the gts but gradually as i started giving the gts and uh, my frequency i increased it to around uh, two times in a month that is every fortnightly and i realized that more than which rank you land up uh, on or how well you perform more than that i think one must look at the trend and uh, whether uh, the performance is gradually improving or the performance is Uh, you know at a plateau level or whether it's going down because that tells you no gt and given on any platform will be able to predict the rank that you finally secure in the main exam that you give so the main the idea about gts is to look at the trend and that is one mistake that i made when i was preparing because uh, a bad rank would used to get my confidence down a lot and that used to affect how i study for the next one or two days and uh, i think that is one thing that needs to be that i wanted to improve about myself so that's the advice i would want to give to someone who's preparing that um, do not take the rank at face value that is not the rank that you uh, secure in any exam until you give the exam you will never know what your true potential is so i would advise uh, to give frequent uh, gts and to review the reviewing part of the gt is more important than the um than the giving the attempting part of the questions so reviewing is most important someone who doesn't have time to review all the gt questions uh, sometimes 200 questions can be too time consuming so for them i would suggest that um, uh, reviewing the questions in the order uh, in this order that maybe the ones that you did not uh, attempt and the ones that you got wrong and the ones which you did attempt correctly but had a doubt while attempting i think these questions definitely need to be reviewed even if you're not reviewing all the 200 questions and um, i had this it was a very um, uh, difficult part for me to leave out questions while reviewing the gt and that used to uh, take up a lot of my time but then i think in the end it is all what is adding to your knowledge and uh, an overall development uh, in the knowledge uh, that complements your notes the question bank and every other thing that you attempt towards the same goal so i think uh, planning out when and how many gts to be given in a month is also a very important aspect because giving too many gts will spoil and will probably make you compromise on the uh, quality of the reviewing that you do for the questions and um, like i said reviewing is more important than attempting uh, yeah so uh, that is one factor that has to be considered while planning out the gts and uh, along with this i would uh, suggest that if 
uh, a person feels comfortable while preparing they should definitely attempt subject wise tests that are previously uploaded on maro even if they are not live because uh, this is something that i realized when i was halfway through my preparation that uh, maybe reading the notes again and again does become redundant after a point of time so if um, i used to give a subject wise gt like i used to give a surgery uh, sorry a subject wise test like a surgery short test which was attempted uh, which was uploaded previously on maro it is not a live test but after giving that uh, that uh, small test maybe 50 questions um, that will just give me an idea about how i need to structure my uh, note reading also so this is one thing that can be tried for people who definitely feel that they learn more from questions by attempting questions and by reading answers more than they uh, would benefit from notes but after all it has to be a combination of judiciously giving gts reviewing them on time adding to your notes and also reading the notes side by side so the first time i attempted an essay in uh, last november by then i had attempted um, most of the previous uh, questions that were given in maro and uh, at that point of time i hadn't even thought of extending um, reviewing the questions asked in jipmer and pgi so i did not attempt anything outside maro um but after i gave the ns at november i realized that there were major uh, areas which i need to work upon and that included reading and structuring my day in such a way that i am able to judiciously allot time to uh, maybe two subjects in a day and then also keep some time for uh, attempting the question bank or maybe subject wise tests so after november i started Uh, dividing my day into two and uh, the major part maybe 6 hours i used to allot to a uh, one major subject like surgery and 3 uh, hours of revision um, and this included my notes specifically and um, the rest 3 hours to another short subject like i previously mentioned i was doing psychiatry and uh, that depends it depends on the liking and depends on how one wants to um, uh, you know sort of uh, com- combine two subjects which are complementary to each other so this is when i realized that um, doing surgery and psychiatry was proving beneficial to me better than uh, attempting one subject in a day and uh, but one thing that has to be kept separate segregated from every other uh, mo- modes of uh study has to be the question bank every day last 2 to 3 hours maybe in the end or whenever one finds it convenient that time should be dedicated to question bank or subject wise test that is one thing that i followed after uh, attempting my november and i set and um that is what i continued till april so somewhere after april when uh, around a- the end of april when need got cancelled it really do- demoted uh, demotivated me and uh, in may i got affected with covid so my entire process went haywire i was not able to decide as to how i should uh, go back to my notes which was becoming a big problem for me now and uh, that that is when it affected my overall scores in gts also quite a lot so initially i was scoring the worst of my gts i used to score somewhere around uh, under 200 but uh, after may um, when my entire preparation suffered and uh, in the, in fact the last ns at mock that i gave before this uh, july ns at my rank was in the 400s so that demotivated me a lot but then one thing that i had learned from my previous experience i implemented it this time and that is probably that is what made the difference in my outlook towards the exam and that was um with the worst of my preparation if i was scoring a rank of 400 i thought that in the main exam if i give my best i will land up somewhere i might line up, land up somewhere better so this is one thing that structuring the whole day during your preparation and um, uh, allotting a judicious amount of time and depending on how long the subject is and how difficult one finds it that is the most important part because that is when we are building on the concepts and another thing which i would like to reinforce here which i've already mentioned previously that gt marks they do tend to bring us down if we don't score well but i don't think that should be the um, the way to gauge ourselves and to uh, the way we look at ourselves because there's always scope for improvement until we give the exam so anyone who is appearing for the neat pg in september i would like to say that uh, the major part of your preparation is over so congratulations for that because that is the major journey the journey is not the exam but the journey that you make uh, through the times when you are preparing for it so this these 40 days are going to just be a catalyst and um, this is something that has to be uh, realized by everyone who's uh, who's uh, taking the exam in, in the september so i would suggest that uh, 
not losing touch of the notes is one of the most important things and that is where i feel that i lack somewhere so even in this last 40 days do not leave the notes uh, read maybe you can go topic wise and instead of reading the entire subjects uh, in one go you can go topic wise see what all questions what are the areas from where the previous um, exams from where the uh, previous exams were um, focusing especially those points can be revised so it's better to go uh, or have a topic wise targeted approach rather than going uh, in terms of completing subjects because now 40 days is probably not enough for everybody to finish all the notes again so i think attempting too many questions in a day will also decelerate the whole process of revision so um around 100 questions in a day at this point of time for somebody who's preparing for this who has been preparing for this entire year will be sufficient in my view and uh, if i were to give a uh, need i would have probably done the same but one thing is do not leave uh, your notes because uh, they are like the cement it builds up and it uh, keeps all the information that is there in our brains into place so that is one mistake that i learned uh, from and i would advise the same to everybody who's preparing now and uh, coming to somebody who's in their um, mbbs uh, currently doing their mbbs for a person like that i would definitely suggest that anything anything can be done in terms of uh, writing notes whether uh, watching videos and writing your own notes or if you're not comfortable with that buying uh, maro notes is an equally good idea but the major thing is that while in mbbs one should try to read the standard textbooks as much as possible maro will definitely be a very very good supplement but not reading textbooks is um, will be a blunder because we all um, like my batch and when i was in uh, mbbs we all read textbooks and started maro later but i do wish that i had this opportunity and this option of enrolling for uh, or subscribing for maro at that point of time but uh, do not leave reading the main textbooks especially in final year and pre final year so like i said maro notes is a boon for somebody who does not have enough time to make their own notes uh, but at the same time i would definitely suggest that somebody who's um, who has a lot of time between uh, the, now when they're preparing and the main exam that they want to attempt or uh, somebody who's in uh, mbbs currently i would suggest that at this point of time it's better not to buy notes right now but to make your own notes as much as possible and combine and put every information over there and go through it periodically uh, as and when you get time but if somebody does feel that um, the as the edition changes the information is also changing and the notes are getting upgraded as well so that that's why my suggestion will be to buy notes if you need it and uh, that should be just before in the particular year that you are dedicating to um, preparing for pg itself and not before that because keeping the habit of writing notes and um, you know being more focused about what you're watching and the topics that you're learning and writing is really important for somebody who is still in their mbbs and uh, for the others who are attempting or, or that target is maybe uh, the next nset or the next year uh, pg i would definitely suggest that if you are not one of those who can uh, commit and write their own notes then buying na- uh, maro notes at this point of time is uh, will be the best option and um, judiciously using the space that is provided over there adding as much information as you get from outside and supplementing the notes and making it one complete package i think that's where your preparation begins when you um, start revising these keep revising it as many times as possible do not lose touch with your notes and telling uh, everybody this from my mistake i think that will be the uh, best strategy to go through Uh, so after attempting the last and i said uh, one thing that i had realized was that uh, there is no way where we can one can prepare for the exams like and i said because the questions the topics it's all tricky cannot be predicted but uh, one thing that we can be sure of is our preparation um so that is what this time i was not preparing um for particularly for and i said i was preparing for neat and for all the exams that i will give and i said it was definitely one of them so as this the, the day came and i went for the exam and i saw the questions um the question pattern was so different this time and radically different from the last i said that was uh, that i attempted and some few questions were so easy that everybody and anybody who was either even doing their internship at this point of time will be able to answer some other questions were so unpredictable that despite having studied for one entire year i was not sure of the answer so it sort of balanced a lot of things out this exam had balanced a lot of things out so where from which where you had studied from how long you had studied i think 
it was a very atypical paper this time and it cancelled all these variable factors out so after i attempted the exam i made it a point not to go through any um, recall session and uh, anything at for those few days till the result came out because that just increases the anxiety levels and uh, one gets apprehensive so this time i did not repeat the mistake i made last time and i just switched off all my uh, social media accounts and it, i did not go through any recall questions and um, until the result came so uh, i would suggest that for people who become anxious and uh, who study uh, suffer if they get anxious after looking at the recall sessions and after realizing what all questions they have probably attempted wrong would be uh, not to go through anything until the result comes out and you're sure in which direction you're proceeding if you get a seat well and good but if you want to attempt the other exams which come after this and i said i think only after you've decided that you're going to study that's the best time to uh, attentively att uh, attend all the recall sessions and i think the recall sessions um, that are conducted by maro are the most accurate because i saw them last time after my last ns exam and um, i think that should be the strategy and do not look at recall sessions if you are anxious and not sure of handling it well after you have attended the exam so this was my mistake and i did not repeat it this time um and i'm sure that uh, this will at least be good for you you will have a peaceful time after the exam till you are ready to begin studying again if it is needed So when I began my preparation last year I was uh, not using any of my social media accounts and I was not even aware of the Marolinks group that existed on uh, Facebook so after uh, maybe few days a few months into the preparation i realized uh, especially after my uh, last and i said november i got back on facebook and i realized that there's a group for plan c users uh, called maro links on facebook and i joined it so um, i will uh, definitely say that it is something that i used only towards the end of my preparation before the exam when a lot of updates were given and every faculty has taken immense efforts into putting the latest updates in the most readable and uh, concise manner in the form of uh, flash cards and um, that is a wonderful thing i feel on maro links and uh, but i'm i'm sort of uh, sad that i didn't use it earlier but then maybe that one thing about um, social media has its own um, Uh, pros and cons so but i am glad that towards the end i was able to discover this feature and i was able to use it before attempting the exam um and like after the result of course it was a surreal feeling you one does not expect this despite the best uh, preparation that we could have done in uh, the past year i was not expecting this rank and it was a um, really happy a very happy moment for me and for my family and uh, my family uh, i'm staying with my family throughout my preparation pro uh, process i was staying with my family and uh, my parents my brother and my grandmother they have been my constant supports they have made sure that i don't lose out on my study time and uh, pay attention to anything else in the house and they have always encouraged me to be the be best version of myself and give my 100% because in the end um, all said and done whether we get a ra good rank or we don't that does not after a point of time that does not matter if we have put in our best efforts but um, regretting the fact that when we had the time we didn't give our best is probably one thing that will pinch us throughout our lives if we don't rectify it at this at this moment so um to everybody who's watching this video um i was just an above average student not somebody who had ever imagined of securing a double digit rank in the ini set or for that matter in any exams but it is doable but it is doable only with perseverance diligence and full hearted efforts and um, i wish you all the best uh, the best of your luck and the best of your ability may you put it into action and may you achieve everything that you aspire for